Hello, hello. Is this going live? I'm not too sure. Anyway, this is Glenn, back with another coin video. Um, I've had to make this live because I actually didn't make a video for today. I've uh, just been a little bit busy. So, today's theme is 1960s pennies. So, I've got quite a few. The not too sure if this video is private or not, I'll put on unlisted, but um, it was not scheduled. Anyway, so we've got 1960s pennies, so we've got 1960, 61, uh, 62, 63 and 64, and I will actually make an individual video for these just describing the dates, but I've actually not gone through these pennies uh, for a while. So I've actually got a few, and I've got a, I've gotten rid of a few. So these ones, what you need to look for are uh, any errors. So I hope this focuses. No. Oh, oh. So hello, anyone who's out there. So if you can, s oh. maybe I need to clean the actual camera. So okay, that's very touchy when I actually touch it. So anyway. What we're looking at here it looks like it actually has a little bit of ghosting, so that's where the strike from the this side is uh been impacted on the actual design planchet. So and you can see that also has some some damage on this side. So that actually might be mint damage. So that's the actual first coin, and then if I use another camera, I actually will be able to uh, show that in a lot better detail. But that looks like there's something wrong with the flan, not the actual die. If I compare it with a, another penny, so the reverse, uh, you can actually see it quite clearly. If So you can see the actual good details of her nose on this side and you can see that there's actually a problem with her nose and the imprint on the mouth as well and also down to the neck I actually didn't pick that up before maybe because it's a new coin I'm not too sure so that is what you need to be looking for for these 1960s pennies because these are actually really not worth a lot of money you'll be struggling to sell them for a dollar each even in good condition um, you can get graded coins but they're only they struggle to sell for ten dollars so it's really just not worth grading these at all especially uncirculated 1950 1964 this one has the dot after it so it's actually from the perfumint and if I I know one is 10 million. Okay, I'm looking at the Renix catalogue. There's actually two good catalogues. There's Renix and there's another one I'm, I'm going to purchase soon. So this one has 54,590,000. So it's quite a common coin. It's just going to be very inexpensive for the next few hundred years. So, hello people. So these ones. The only thing you actually be looking for is a high grade one if you want to actually put in your collection or any errors. Apart from that, I pretty much would just sell these as a bulk lot of probably 50, 100 coins. And a hell of a lot of them are actually in very good condition like this one. These are probably never really saw much circulation because they were minted in... 
No, probably 65, not 66. Ah, that's it. McDonald is the second guy. I'm going to get that, and then I'm going to see which one is best. So, Rodney, which one do you think is better? The Renix or McDonald? I need to write that down. Because a lot of people actually use Renix, but it has a lot of problems with it. So... 1964 I don't see any problem with that so this one does not have the actual dot after pennies so this is the actual Melbourne Mint only 10 million but still quite a common coin in in this grade you're probably looking at probably probably a dollar to two dollars not really worth much then we have another one, so as you can see, all those are actually pretty good. Uh, these were withdrawn from circulation on the 14th of September 1966 when they changed over to decimal currency. It probably would have taken a few weeks to actually get rid of them all from circulation. Uh, so a lot of these wouldn't have actually been issued. Uh, they just would have been held in probably banks and probably sold as rolls after decimalization. Ah, McDonald's is out of circulation. And the author is very old and stopped making new ones, I believe. Okay, I need to look that up. I'll get back to you on that. Um... Here is another coin, very high grade, but unless it's an error, not really worth worrying about. Okay, so this one has, looks like it's got corrosion on it, so these are the coins you don't want, it's got corrosion. Don't worry, the pen's not going to do any damage to the actual coin, uh, because of, if you know the... One's hardness, I believe these are actually pretty much the same hardness, so it's pretty hard to actually scratch it. So this is bronze, this is probably brass, so it probably actually has a a weaker strength than the actual bronze. So this one's actually a little bit circulated, so not really worth worrying about. Then we have this one, you can see this coin here actually still has mint luster. So mint luster mint just means it's pretty shiny. And so this one probably been out of a roll. You can see it's actually got a little bit of a weak strike, which is actually not very uncommon. Also the date also has a bit of a weak strike. And these are actually not very uncommon. So when an error is actually common, it doesn't add any value to the actual coin or the banknote. And that's why the 2018 $5, even though it has the printing spelling mistake on, oh, I can't remember what word it was, uh, it doesn't actually add any value to it. So don't buy those at an inflated value. If you're in Australia, you can get it for $50. If you're in overseas, you'll be paying a little bit more because you have to source it from Australia somehow. And uh, so this one is, as you can see, a little bit of a weak lettering there. It's probably a die fill or maybe the actual die has been worn. And here's a coin that you don't want. It's been circulated. As you can see, it has a lot of wear, a lot of scratches, lots of dings. So this one's only worth about a dollar. Unless it's an error, then we'll get a bit more. Uh, there's actually quite a few errors that you can find on the actual penny from most years because there's such a large flan and because it has a lot of pressure put on it. Okay, Benjamin Queens without a crown here, which is a strange one. Well, I don't think it's strange because because she does have a reef on her head 
Uh, and different monarchs from different periods actually had no crown like uh, on the table. So I've got, this is the UK coin, George V. So in the UK he didn't have a crown. And where's the Australian one? Oh, here you go. Well, let me see if I can get a better coin. Okay, and in Australia, you actually had a crown. So it depends on the actual country. So as you can see, George V coins from the UK and Australia had different uh, portraits on the actual coin. And if we look at George VI, he didn't have a crown. But... It depends on the actual monarch. Most monarchs never had a crown on their head. Do I have one? I've got some Queen Victoria. So here's a Queen Victoria. She does have a veiled crown. So she's got a crown up top. Do I have a better one? Um, no. I do have some pennies here somewhere. Okay, and... In the earlier coins, she's just got a wreath. She doesn't actually have a crown. So it depends on the actual portrait that, that's actually... Um, uh, just looking for some other coins as well. I've got a whole heap of them on my table, as you can see here. So all different countries. got... China over there, got Vanuatu, Mauritius, Africa, just so many coins. I need to actually get them organised. So anyway, I was looking for some Hong Kong coins. Uh, Queen Elizabeth II uses pretty much the same portrait as Australia, except for the first issue, which used, and I don't have any on the table. I actually put them away yesterday. Ah, I've got another coin now. Where is it? Oh, here you go. Got a Belize, 25 cent. And this one's 1991. And they actually use the first portrait still. Or the second, whichever one you want to know. And they actually still use this portrait on their coins, so... Uh, as you can see, it's a bit different than the ones that they used in most other countries. So these ones are pretty much used on uh, colonial coins. So Bally's at the time was actually a colonial country, like Hong Kong. Um, how about Africa? I've got some African coins here. Okay, so here we have a George the Six from... This is East Africa, and as you can see, the actual portrait actually has a crown. And then, this, oh yeah, another colonial one, same from East Africa. So the, this was only used on colonial coins. And I'm just seeing if I actually got another coin with a crown. No, got a fruppance from West Africa. And it's got the crown. So... Oh wait, do I have... Damn. So anyway, I'm getting actually distracted here. I was actually going on about pennies, but maybe I'll do another video on the actual different uh, monarchs and what their effigies were. So, the last thing I'll go is earlier coin of Hong Kong, Queen Elizabeth II, and she actually has a crown. So that is... No, it's okay for the distraction. What could a penny buy in 1960s? A uh, penny is probably equivalent to 50 cents now. 
so you couldn't actually buy that much so you could buy whatever 50 cent coin you can buy this one's uh, 1981 but there are actually calculators so if you'd like using my phone oops I will show you how to actually find the inflation values of an actual coin so they're called inflation calculator and you can actually get them for a few countries the UK um, you can and the United States do have them usually the central bank doesn't so this is from the inflation calculator from the Reserve Bank and it's actually two so this the first one you go to is actually for decimal coins so from 1966 to current and there's a pre-decimal inflation and what you can do is put one okay so we want one penny not WZZ then you put the date okay so 1966 would in calendar year so we want the latest and hopefully they have the 2020 so if we put that in I didn't so if we put no let me just check on that Okay, seems I'm actually having a bit of problem with the actual calculator. Doesn't seem to wanting to work. Uh, Nineteen. Okay, seems I was a bit wrong. Uh, one penny from 1965 is equal to 11 cents. So whatever a 10 cent coin can actually buy you now. So that's basically what a one penny could buy. Um, so we were actually looking for error coins, and I've got a few coins mixed up in there. Uh, so, oh god, so um, I need to refocus this. No, that's too close. Okay. No, not much. That's why they're actually, these coins are actually not worth much because at the time period they couldn't actually buy much. Uh, you'd find that a florin has increased in value a lot more than what these have. A florin coin actually has a bullion value now of about six dollars fifty, I believe, because the price of silver has actually gone up. Hello, Coinin the Barbarian. Coinin or Conan? Coinin. That's a nice play on words. Yes, Rodney, 1966 was uh, 14th for February, uh, Valentine's Day. With, um, when we changed over, one pound equals two dollars. And this coin was actually demonetized. This is worth one twelfth of a cent. So if you've seen a one cent coin, it's actually quite small. 
So you need 10 of these to equal, well it's not 1 12th of a cent, you need 10 of these to equal 12 of these. So, um, I'm not going to do the maths on that. So this is worth 10 twelfths of a penny, something like that. Doesn't matter really. I actually was not very good at calculus though. And I actually still do like calculus, quite good. So, uh, you can see the actual rim on this coin is actually not really that good. It actually looks like it's been damaged somehow, but that's probably just from the actual mint. Because... Okay, there you go. So, you can see the actual damage on the coin. So that's probably just dye wear from the mint. Uh, these it's pretty common on these coins and you can see you can actually see there's uh, some either corrosion from before but considering the coins not that worn I'd say it's probably just uh, damage to the actual flan you can see or maybe dye damage because these would have been just used quite a lot until they've actually been quite worn if you see Indian coins, currently they actually use them until there's almost nothing left of the actual die. So, this coin we have some damage here. But as you can see, you can see the mint last year. It's actually quite nice. Quite well, like it actually. And you can see these coins actually have differential uh, development of patina. So patina is just when the copper in the actual coins uh, oxidizes to a copper oxide and it goes like a dark brownish color and it actually protects the interior of the coin from uh, corrosion or degradation so corrosion is usually iron Jacob World how you going mate how is everything hope you like pennies I was just gonna do a short video but how long has it been now? 22. I need to finish up soon. So I don't think I'll actually be able to actually get through all of these. I don't want to actually make the video quite long. I need to actually get into studying and read up some of my material. Everything is good. I was at work today. Everyone's pretty happy because, oh, a lot of these don't know where having a level 4 lockdown in Melbourne yes I'm in Melbourne and it's because I think we had 650 cases it's cold today was 18 beautiful if you want a cold you go to Northern Europe but I don't particularly like the cold I like the warmth so uh, yeah, 650 cases. So, we have a level 4 lockdown. That means you can only go out if it's actually essential. You can only walk about, I think they said one hour a day for less than 5 kilometers from your house. So, stop being selfish, people. Anyway, what was I talking about? Ah, this coin is ghosting. You can see the head of... Queen Elizabeth II, this is quite common on pennies, and I see that it's actually common on UK and the United States coins as well. Yes, listen, Jacob, are you in Victoria? It would be a pity if you are, because a lot of the other states are actually doing a lot better, but I think New South Wales and Queensland are probably going to follow us. And as you can see, this coin is actually not really circulated. There's a lot of mint luster on it. Although it looks pretty dull. So that's probably it. The actual coin. Brisbane. Erwin Van Geert. How is Brisbane today? Brisbane must be nice. Robert Gears. Yes, I'm... Glad that they, South Australia, shut the border again. 
Hmm. Oh no, Frankston. That, that's at least you have the beach. If you need to walk somewhere, just walk to the beach. It's going to take a few pennies to pay. Okay, to pay the debt back that we're racking up. Uh, I suppose so. Yes, it will be. Or they could actually do it another way. They could inflate it away. So they could just try and increase inflation. So that would actually eat the debt. And also eat the debt that people have. Like when they buy a house for a billion dollars, then their currency goes to a billion dollars to one American dollar. They can just get rid of the debt that way. So, the situation here is not good. I'd say it's actually better than the United States. Any crowns? Yeah, I have quite a few crowns actually. Uh... I actually don't. Do I have any on the table? No. I've got other coins though. So I've got East German five marks. I've got German five marks. I've got those Cook Islands coins that I put a video up before. They're all on the table. But I should have one crown. Oh, here you go. I just so I've got a crown here. These are actually not bad coins. So this is actually a 1935 crown. Uh, this is the last silver one, as far as I know. So I can't remember the actual mintage, but this is actually quite a nice coin. As you can see, George V doesn't have a crown on his head. Not like they did in Australia. And then after that, most of the crowns, or all of them actually, just pretty much copper nickel, just junk coins. So these ones are probably worth about $5. I think there's like 35 million minted, so these coins actually will never actually be worth a lot of value. But these ones would still have the silver value, so from 1920. The UK issued these as 50% silver and that would have a value uh, so uh, $6.50 so $13, $18, $19.50 this one so about $20 of silver this coin does and King George the Eighth coins. Is there a King George the Eighth? Or you mean King Edward the Seventh? Robert, do you mean Edward the Seventh? There's actually a few coins. Uh, I've got one of them here. So here you go, West Africa, Edward the Eighth. That one is uh, 1936. Sutter, he does have a few coins. Fiji, or is it Papua New Guinea? Um, Santa said he only have any of ones. George V, George VI. There's actually not that many. Uh, I do have one from.
So here's another one from New Guinea. So this is the northern half of Papua New Guinea. The southern half is the province of Papua. And this one's Edward. That was issued for Edward. And have any No, so that's all I have. Just those two coins issued for Edward VIII. I presume that's who you're talking about. And these ones are actually not rare. So this coin you'd probably be paying probably about ten to fifteen dollars for. This one's actually uncirculated, just mint lustre. Or probably extremely fine. I I do have a few others. I got them as a set. And this one's a five cent from East Africa, 1936, also not a low mint coin, so I presume they would have just started to strike these coins and they just would have not worried about uh, getting rid of them and just issued them for circulation. Okay. Uh, I don't have many Victorian crowns. What is the lowest mintage Ellen Australian pennies that are worth collecting? Uh, 1930, everyone knows about that. Uh, 1925 is also a low mint. Uh, 1946, after the Second World War because of the reduction of US troops, they stopped issuing coins. Um, 1914, 720,000. 1915 had two, London, 960,000, and Heaton, 1,320,000. Then, 1918 is also sort of um, collectible, 1.2 million. So, then uh, 1925, 117,000. That's the one you want. 1930, about 50. I think one and a half to three thousand they estimate. Nineteen thirty one, four hundred and ninety four thousand. And that's it for the George V. Then the only kangaroo one that's worth collecting is uh nineteen forty six, which is three hundred and sixty three thousand. What do you have uh rue pennies are actually very common. Okay, do we have any other questions? Okay. Are there any star notes for the Australian Polymer s series? No, there isn't. Uh, I believe they stopped issuing star notes in 1973. Also, if you get a Renix catalogue, so the Renix catalogue is like this. Okay. This has all the information that you actually need for Australian coins, uh, except for errors. So it's actually very good. So, star notes. Yeah, 1972 when they stopped issuing star notes. So, the 50 and $100 doesn't have star notes because they'll issue it after that time. The $100 first issued in 1984. And the fifty dollars issued in nineteen seventy three, so a year after they stopped issuing star notes, and star notes are actually very expensive. Uh, this coin, nah, this coin doesn't have much value. Probably talking about five dollars for that coin, just because it's in Edward the Eighth, but. You can actually look up the mintages on Numista, which is, or any other coin catalogue. But I prefer Numista because it's just, I've just gotten used to actually uh, using it. So, so this is it. You got Numista. Go to Browse Coins, and we want British. 
West Africa. Or you could just type it up the top, but so here you go. Or maybe else actually um East Africa. Okay, so just type it up the top and click on East Africa. Okay, so we want a shilling next. And as you can see, 41 cent, there was no Edward. So here we go, Edward the eight foot of five cent. So this one is minted to three and a half million. You can see the, the sum of the values. But I'll take these values for a grain of salt because um, you don't know when the actual coin was actually purchased. This one, see that's how much I brought that coin for. I can't remember how many, how many, what the value I actually pay for. So I just put them in here. So two dollars. So no, no. Then you got the ten cent. So that was also issued for Edward the Eighth. And as you can see, probably five to ten dollars you can actually sell those coins for. Um, pretty common coin. And that's why the Australian five cent from nineteen seventy three. Is it 1973 or 72? Ah, 72, sorry. Uh, with 8 million, it won't get much of a value. You get more than 5 cents for it, but it's not going to make you a millionaire. So... Okay. Silver, 19... 19 square penny, ha <laughs> ha. Uh, that would have been a trial coin in 19, the square pennies, not issued for circulation. Okay. 46 and 21. I've got some of them, like the coins with some of the coins in the holes in the center. Uh, Ghana, the earlier Ghana coins are actually worth more than uh, this one, especially the 20 and the 50 uh, Pesiwa. The current Ghana coins are actually not worth that much. Oh, I've just been told I have to finish by the boss, and you're not the boss, he's the boss, is the wife. So, other coins I actually have here are actually. Okay, so we've got an Egyptian 10 para and a Turkish 20 para. So this is a Togrig. I'm getting a bit distracted here from pennies, but uh, I find pennies a bit boring. So I'm just going to make another video on these actual coins. And I actually like to just answer your questions in these videos or live streams. I saw that PJ actually done a live stream with. Oh, I've got a lot more. God. Halloween. Yeah, done a live stream. It's actually quite good. I actually missed out on it. But an hour long, uh, I actually sh mm, can't really sit through video that long unless it's something that I actually like. I was watching a video on the Luvians who used to live with the Hittites, I actually find that very fascinating. And I like the Sumerians as well. Okay, Papua New Guinea coins is lovely. Yes, they are. And must increase with condition, but believe they are fair value anyway. Uh, Papua New Guinea coins actually are not really that expensive. Uh, like I bought, I sell the one Kina coin, probably for about seven or eight dollars from 1975. Uh, you probably can pick up an uncirculated set for about $20. D 
Do you have any community five dollar notes? Uh why are you talking about this one here? Yes I do. I've sold most of my commemorative five dollar notes because it's just I just wanted to keep this one. So that's in the actual Centenary Federation pack. But that's pretty much the only one I have. If you can get one for twenty dollars, I'd say pick it up because that's actually a good value. What do the dots mean? Um, Trevor, I'm not too sure what you mean. What, what do the dots mean? On. Oh, okay. So you're talking. Okay, so I think you mean the dot after penny. So that is actually a mint mark. It means that this is produced at the Perth Mint. You can find the dot down here or after the actual Australia. Sometimes you can find it before penny. Do I have another one? Oh wait, I'll just get another coin. So here we have one from 1940. Any dots? Forty-one. Here you go. So here's another one. So this is actually an Indian one. You can tell by the way the kangaroo is. Has a dot before and after penny. Probably because these the actual so here's one from the Perth Mint, so that's the 1942, and this 42, you can see the kangaroo is actually weird. So this is from India, and you can tell it's from India, because it has an eye underneath the effigy. And sometimes you can find them without an eye, and that's actually an error coin. And after Australia. Any other questions? Okay, bye bye Jacob, thank you for tuning in and I will go, oh you probably already left. Um, the current notes have bumps, not braille. Yes, they do. Uh, different countries issue different banknotes with uh, different bumps or lines for blind people would actually um, look, look them up. So. Here I have some coin banknotes from Tanzania. You can see you've got one line there. You've got two here, so that's a 500, 1,000. You've got 2,000 with an arrow, uh, 5,000 with two arrows, and 10,000 with three arrows. And this is actually, if you run your finger over them, they're actually quite rough. And that's for the blind people, as well as the size to actually see which denomination it actually is. So, uh, one of the countries that doesn't have this is the United States, and that's a pity. Uh, I think they've been told they have to reform the actual... Okay... And uh, they stopped issuing the hundred dollar note in 1996. That's when they that's when they first printed the polymer banknote, and they would have issued the uh, they would have printed the hundred dollar banknote between 92 and 96 with the Fraser Cole signature. So I'd say probably the last printing would have been 95, probably a year before. They would have actually printed quite a few just in case there was problems with the polymer banknote. And then they just would have destroyed the excess banknotes. That's what they done with the 2014 
banknote of the last series. They printed them, but they didn't issue them. Uh, the 1915, probably about five dollars in low grade. Then it goes higher. The boss is his wife. Nineteen thirty penny. Okay, nineteen thirty pennies. You'll be looking at a minimum of ten thousand dollars actually buy one of those coins. So someone wants it to sell you a nineteen thirty penny. For lower than that, it's most likely a fake. Ah, uh, yes, the first five and ten dollar. I don't see how you can get them mixed up because one's a lighter color and the other one's a darker color. So my old should do a video on that. How do you make Christian? Hello, Ricky. Thanks again for the chat, Glenn. The polymer change right. I'm not too sure what you mean on the polymer change right. Okay, so I actually got off track with that. I was actually going through all these pennies. I did find an error, but I've lost it now. Um, this is one of the first coins. I think that one's it. There's something wrong with the queen's face. So there you go. You can see. This is the only thing we should actually be getting these pennies for. Is actually find errors. Because it's not worth grading these coins. So if we have a look at another coin. You can see the differences. Oops, where's it gone? So you can see the differences in the nose. So that's what you actually need to be looking for in these pennies. So here's a 1962. And also you can see here, this is probably starting the development of a die crack. So you've got a streak there, it's part of the actual coin. You've got mint luster. So it's actually a nice coin to get if you want a collection, but not really going to be worth that much. And then we have a low grade coin, so this is probably in circulation for a little bit. But as you can see, it has mint luster. And also, if you don't have this toning effect, if it's like shiny, but you also have some dirt around here or some grime, it's been cleaned. And if it's just shiny, but it, it just doesn't look right, it looks flat. So that's been cleaned. And then you got ones that have been in circulation for about five to six years, 1960. So this one you definitely don't want to collect. Also look for doubling on the lettering. So doubling, which Doesn't increase the value that too much, probably about ten to twenty dollars. Um, if you get one with good doubling, you can probably go up to like a hundred dollars. But there's not a big market in error coins for three decimals. A lot of people just like the decimal coins, especially the two dollars. And yeah, perf. And a few of you have seen my video on the Australian pump and dump market, which is the two dollar coins. Because a lot of a lot of new people come in. Um, a lot of them have come in to collect coins, and a few others have just come in to just make some money, which is like normal. You get that in everyone, every industry. Okay, so looks like we've got a die crack up here. Okay, above Elizabeth, it's actually quite weak and faint, but that would have developed into something very good if they actually didn't find it early enough. So from the second, goes all the way around, up into Regina, and there, yeah, so that's a quite a large die crack. And this actually qu happens quite a lot on 
these actual coins. So, any other comments? Okay. We should go back to real silver and gold. That was Ronnie Casputis. I hope I probably butchered your name. Sorry, mate. Sounds looks Greek actually. Um, real silver. I'm not too sure if with the current population that there's enough silver to actually make coins, especially when we also use silver in ever in industries like um, I was doing an experiment to check the level of chlorine in water and then we we're using a silver uh, silver oxide and silver chromium Robert Grace Ivan on circular one dollar that's nice, cool. <clears throat> hey, um, ooh, 2008, hey, hey, $20, that's actually a good night to keep. Uh, all $1 are actually good to keep. She does have a beard. Uh -huh. I'm not the only one here. Now this this camera is actually not good. It's actually a Samsung Tab. I actually don't have a good camera for this. I actually have problems with actual focusing on the actual coins because this camera is actually not really for to doing this. The resolution is actually quite low. It's very grainy as well. I'm not too sure on the pixelation. But my mobile phone actually has better pixelation than this coin, uh, this uh, camera here. So, you can't actually get very good detail, especially in close ups. You can only, this is probably the best I can do without it losing a lot of focus. Okay, Wayne, people will pay for gap fillers because you can't afford. Not everyone can get a 1930 penny. I would say most people, especially me, I can't afford a 1930 penny. And if you want to get an imitation, um, at least just don't sell it when you want to as. A real coin that's all I've got to say if you want a gap filler that's fine like a 1925 penny if you want to get a low-grade coin that's cool this is uh, your money it is your decision and it's up to you what you actually collect um, me myself I'm not interested in actually getting all the coins uh, I just like to get these coins to do videos, but coins are actually, I'd actually like to get, uh, like these rupee. This is a, oh, a 1905 rupee. So these ones probably cost about 20 to $50. Probably in this grade, you're probably talking about $20. <coughs> no, sorry, Corona. Yes, I do like to make joke of it, uh, because so, because I'm sometimes I'm a jerk. So king and emperor. So this is probably just where uh, I think the 1930 pennies. I believe they go for like five to ten dollars if they're a counterfeit. So. Here's the 1919, it's actually quite nice. You can see the clover, the official of Scotland, the clover of Ireland, the rose of England, and it doesn't have a leak of Wales, because Wales is part of, or uh, part of the United uh, England. 
And here we have a 1881. So I've got this one because they actually didn't have the coin I ordered. So they sent two. I told them I'd actually pay for it. But they said don't worry about it. But I sent them money. I'm not too sure if they actually got it. Ah, uh, you can never have enough silver, Ricky, because silver is just awesome. It's also a good hedge against inflation. Uh, all the money printing that a lot of countries are actually doing. Australia is pretty much one of the lucky countries in that we haven't suffered from high inflation. But if you go to countries like Papua New Guinea, uh, their inflation rate's a lot higher than ours. Even Indonesia. Indonesia, their, their currency just continues to decline. It's been stable over the past 10 years, but that's relatively rare in Indonesia's case. So getting silver, and I've heard that when countries have really bad inflation, people actually sold, got silver and gold. Um, we're actually a lot better off. Well, I think in Australia, we're not really going to suffer that fate. So this coin here is probably worth about $100 or so. This is actually a low mint. I think there's like 3 million of them minted. Uh, Ricky, I would say don't ever tell anyone how much silver you have. And that goes the same with all of you people. I, I definitely don't tell anyone. I'll, I'll show you these coins, but... Um, you just don't know if I still have them in next day or next year because um, just remember friends and family can steal from you I'm not too concerned about strangers unless they try and ah that's good. So this is a 1901 last year of Queen Victoria. And you get differences like you got the Mint Marquis Beef or Bombay. And you got differences in the actual flowers there. And also you get differences in the front design of the actual um, her blouse. Not the necklace, just the flowers. So you've got one, two, three, three and a half. You can have four and you can have two and a half. So that's differences. I believe that they were deliberate. So you've got one, two, three, three and a half. One, two, three. This is four because this is almost full. So if you can see. This one's only half, and this one's almost full, so it's classed as four. And I don't have any of the two and a half, which is a pity. Anyway, I'm going to have to leave the live stream here before I get yelled at. Don't worry. Just joking. My wife doesn't yell at me. She just cries. Anyway, all right, so thank you very much for listening to my dull voice, and have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time. Um, leave a comment down below on the actual video if you actually like me to do more of these live streams because I don't know I'm just not too used to actually doing them at the moment thank you very much and goodbye Uh, before I go, Robert asked if it's worth keeping the older designs. Uh, of the ten dollar depends on the depends on the actual year. If it's a common year, then in low grade, no. If it's extremely fine and higher, I'd collect all years. But if uh, if it's, well, I just gotta look it up. If it's like 1993, very low grade, I wouldn't actually worry about keeping it. If it is 2015, I'd probably keep all of them. Um, you can look at the prefixes on the 
Reserve Bank of Australia website and I can actually show you how many were actually printed. Anyway, I need to go, so thank you very much and have an awesome corner bank note collecting time and take care and uh, be safe with uh, the problems that we actually have in this world.